Hello and welcome to my Come Follow Me in 20 ish minutes. This lesson is Ether 12 through 15, which is to be studied November 23rd through the 29th, 2020. I'm Rick Phillips, and in these videos, I share my thoughts and, more importantly, the study information about the main lesson points from the Come Follow Me manuals. PDF versions of the presentations can be found at the website link below this video by clicking the Show More link. Once on the website, make sure to click on the PDF icon, not the scripture reference, to download. If you have any questions, please email me at mycomefollowme at gmail. From the Come Follow Me manuals, I'll be discussing these four lesson points. We will receive a witness of truth as we exercise faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives us a more excellent hope. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, weak things can become strong. Rejecting the prophets brings spiritual danger. Here's a brief overview of these chapters. After recounting many years of Jaredite history, Moroni introduced the ministry of the prophet Ether. Moroni then interrupted the historical count to record some of the blessings that come to those who exercise faith in Jesus Christ. In humble prayer, Moroni expressed a concern. He worried about the weakness he perceived in his writing and in the writing of the other Book of Mormon prophets. The Lord responded with a promise to strengthen those who humble themselves and have faith in him. Moroni recorded Ether's prophecies about the New Jerusalem and the Jerusalem of old. Ether warned Coriantumr, a Jaredite king, that his people would be destroyed if he and his household would not repent. When Coriantumr and his people refused to repent, war and wickedness escalated for many years until the entire Jaredite nation was destroyed. Only Ether and Coriantumr survived to witness the fulfillment of Ether's prophecy. And as we learned and studied way back in Omni, the people of Zarahemla found Coriantumr, and that was a few hundred years into our history of the Book of Mormon. So that massive battle that killed over two million people of the Jaredites was taking place at the same time that the Nephites and Lamanites were in the Americas. Lesson point number one, we will receive a witness of truth as we exercise faith in Jesus Christ. In Ether chapter 12, just an awesome chapter, Moroni recounts the wonders and marvels done by faith. And he says, Wherefore, whoso believeth in God might with surety of hope for a better world, yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith, maketh an anchor, don't you love that imagery, to the souls of men, which would make them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. And it came to pass that Ether did prophesy great and marvelous things unto the people, which they did not believe, because they saw them not. And now I, Moroni, would speak somewhat concerning these things. I would show unto the world that faith is things which are hoped for and not seen. Wherefore, dispute not, because ye see not, for ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith. After verse 6, Moroni starts to give us examples through the ages of the Book of Mormon about uh, events brought about by faith. He says in verse 7, By faith of their fathers, Christ appeared at Bountiful. By faith they were called to the priesthood. By faith was the law of Moses given. By faith was the law of Moses fulfilled. By faith are miracles given. Faith of Alma and Amulek caused the prison walls to fall. Faith of Nephi and Lehi wrought changes upon the Lamanites. Faith of Ammon and others wrought miracles to the Lamanites. By faith, the three Nephites obtained their promises. Many saw Christ before he was born because of faith. And by faith, the brother of Jared was shown all things. Elder Scott said in his talk, The Sustaining Power of Faith in Times of Uncertainty and Testing, you can learn to use faith more effectively by applying this principle taught by Moroni. Ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith. Thus, every time you try your faith, that is, act in worthiness on an impression, you will receive the confirming evidence of the Spirit. Those feelings will fortify your faith as you repeat that pattern. Your faith will become stronger. I believe this is so true. The first part of my mission, I think it was just the second day, I was in Australia and still a little jet lag from the time change. And my companion was teaching a lesson, and I was kind of not paying attention because I was a little tired. And 
I was praying to Heavenly Father, just saying, Heavenly Father, I really need to increase my faith to become a better missionary. How can I do that? And literally, right when I said that in my mind, my companion, we had flip charts back then, flip the page down, our faith grows as we keep the commandments. And that just hit me. And I, that person, I don't think we taught them again. And I think that lesson was really for me that day as I committed even stronger to keep the commandments and obey the mission rules to strengthen my faith. And it was such a blessing to help me on my mission. Our dear President Nelson, in his talk, Face the Future with Faith, back in 2011, and this is the time when the United States was still facing the effects of a recession, and particularly where I live in Las Vegas, and I was serving as bishop at the time, and I just remember this talk so well and, and gave me strength and comfort to talk to our members who were facing a lot of these challenges. He says, each individual will make his or her way in a constantly changing world a world of competing ideologies. The forces of evil will ever be in opposition to the forces of good. Satan constantly strives to influence us to follow his ways and make us miserable, even as he is. And the normal risk of life, such as illness, injury, and accident, will ever be present. We live in a time of turmoil. Earthquakes and tsunamis wreck devastation. Governments collapse. Economic stresses are severe. The family is under attack and divorce rates are rising. We have great cause for concern, but we do not need to let our fears displace our faith. We can combat those fears by strengthening our faith. Lesson point number two, Jesus Christ gives us a more excellent hope. In Ether 1232, it states, And I also remember that thou hast said that thou hast prepared a house for man, yea, even among the mansions of thy father, in which man might have a more excellent hope. Wherefore man must hope, or he cannot receive an inheritance in the place which thou hast prepared. Then skipping ahead in the Book of Mormon in Moroni 7, he says, And again, my beloved brethren, I would speak unto you concerning hope. How is it that ye can attain unto faith, save ye shall have hope? What is it that ye shall hope for? Behold, I say unto you, that ye shall have hope through the atonement of Christ, and the power of his resurrection, to be raised unto, eternal, unto life eternal. And this is because of your faith in him according to the promise. Elder Uchtdorf said, Hope is one leg of a three-leg stool. Together with faith and charity, these three stabilize our lives regardless of the rough or uneven surfaces we might encounter at the time. The scriptures are clear and certain about the importance of hope. The Apostle Paul taught that the scriptures were written to the end that we might have hope. Hope has the power to fill our lives with happiness. Its absence with this desire of our heart is delayed, can make the heart sick. Hope is a gift of the Spirit. It is hope that through the atonement of Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection, we shall be raised unto eternal life, and this because of the faith in our Savior. This kind of hope is both a principle, a promise, as well as a commandment. And as with all commandments, we have a responsibility to make it an active part of our lives and overcome the temptation to lose hope, which is sometimes challenging. Hope in our Heavenly Father's merciful plan of happiness leads to peace, mercy, rejoicing, and gladness. The hope of salvation is like a protective helmet. It is the foundation of our faith and an anchor to our souls. Moroni, in his solitude, even after having witnessed the complete destruction of his people, believed in hope. In the twilight of the Nephite nation, Moroni wrote that without hope we cannot receive an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Lesson point number three, through the grace of Jesus Christ, weak things can become strong. I love this interaction in Ether 12 between Moroni and the Lord, as Moroni shows us that, yes, he is human, we understand that, but we, at least I, think of these prophets in the Book of Mormon as so great, but they do have challenges just like you and I have challenges, and uh, but their faith is strong, and we see this in these verses here. And I said unto him, Lord, the Gentiles will mock at these things because of our weakness in writing. For, Lord, thou hast made us mighty in word by faith, but thou hast not made us mighty in writing. For thou hast made all the people that they could speak much because of the Holy Ghost, which thou hast given them. And thou hast made us, we could write, but little. 
because of the awkwardness of our hands. Behold, thou hast not made us mighty in writing, like unto the brother of Jared, for thou madest him that the things which he wrote were mighty even as thou art, unto the overpowering of man to read them. That would be fun to read one of these days. Thou hast also made our words powerful and great, even that we cannot write them. Wherefore, when we write, we behold our weakness, and we stumble because of the placing of our words. And I fear lest the Gentiles shall mock at our words. And so again, he to see his frailty and, and kind of getting um, down on himself. And then when, he, when I said this, the Lord spake unto me, saying, Fools mock, but they shall mourn. My grace is sufficient for the meek, that they shall take no advantage over your weakness. And then this famous verse here. And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness, that they may be humble. And that's just the weakness of this life. I don't know if the Lord necessarily gives us weaknesses, plural, but just the weakness of this earth life and our mortality. And he continues, And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, I will make then will I make weak things become strong unto them. And then just a few verses later, I love this response by the Lord. He said, And it came to pass that the Lord said unto me, If they, I guess the Gentiles, have not charity, it mattereth not unto thee. Thou hast been faithful. You've been great, Moroni. Wherefore thy garments shall be made clean. And because thou hast seen thy weakness, thou shalt be made strong, even unto the sitting down in the place which I have prepared in the mansions of my father. Sister Anne Pengree, who was a counselor in the General Relief Society Presidency a few years back, said, Sometimes, in spite of all we do to make weak things become strong, the Lord, in his infinite wisdom, does not take away our weakness. The Apostle Paul struggled throughout his life with a thorn in the flesh, which he said served to humble him, lest he should be exalted above measure. Three times Paul asked the Lord to take away his weakness, and three times the Lord declined to do so. The Lord then explained that his grace was sufficient for Paul, similar to Moroni, and that, in fact, his strength was actually made perfect in weakness. And Paul wrote, Most gladly, therefore, I will, will I rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necess necessities, and persecutions, in the distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. But I do remember uh, a talk a long time ago by Elder Maxwell talking about the furnace of affliction. He said, this life, I'm paraphrasing, basically has enough furnaces of affliction that we do not pray for them to get hotter. We will have enough challenges in our life. But I love Sister Pengree and Paul's teachings here that uh, the grace of God will help us as we come to him, strengthen our weaknesses. The final lesson point, rejecting the prophets brings spiritual danger. And I added physical danger because we know what happened uh, to the Jaredites and the Nephites as they rejected their prophets. They died both spiritually and physically. In Ether 12, it says, And it came to pass that in the days of Ether were in the days of Coriantumr. And Coriantumr was king over all the land, and Ether was a prophet of the Lord. Wherefore, Ether came forth in the days of Coriantumr and began to prophesy unto the people, for he could not be restrained because of the spirit of the Lord which was in him. And then a few chapters later, it says, after all that teaching and trying to get the people to listen. It says, But behold, the Spirit of the Lord had ceased striving with them, and Satan had full power over their hearts, over the hearts of the people. For they were given up unto the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, that they might be destroyed. Wherefore, they went again to battle. In the same chapter 15, it says, And it came to pass, when Coriantumr had recovered from his wounds and all these battles, he began to remember the words which Ether had spoken unto him, he saw that there had been slain by the sword already nearly two million of his people, and he began to sorrow in his heart. Yea, there had been slain two million of mighty men, and also their wives and their children. Such a tragic thing that he's remembering too late when he should have listened to his prophet. In an Insight article called Following the Prophets, A Book of Mormon Perspective, it says, from beginning to end, 
the Book of Mormon can be viewed as a handbook on following the prophets. Boy, I certainly believe that as I've studied it this year. Clear examples are given of the blessings that come from heeding the words of the prophets, and clear examples are given of the dangers inherent into rejecting prophetic direction. Thus, its messages are just as relevant today as they were written, as when they were written. Indeed, the book itself exists because prophets' words were heeded. Lehi and the other prophets of the Book of Mormon were a living demonstration that surely the Lord God will do nothing until he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets, from Amos in the Old Testament. As with the Jews, the Lord always forewarns his children before he levies his judgments upon them. We sure saw this in Helaman and 3 Nephi, which President Benson said is just a corollary to our last days. And furthermore, the Book of Mormon, we learn that the Lord fulfills the promises given through his prophets. In conclusion, here are some of the likens I received from these chapters. Faith precedes the miracle, a great book by President Kimball. And I've seen that when I've tried to exercise faith in my life, that um, like we saw the, the Jaredites, they, they didn't believe because they couldn't see. And I think a lot of us in the world today, that is the case. But if we act in faith first, the Lord will provide miracles. Jesus Christ, through his atonement and example, provides me the most excellent way. And time and time again, God has helped me strengthen my weaknesses. And the Book of Mormon is my manual, my handbook of following the prophets, because I know that all will be fulfilled. And I pray that each of us can do that, to learn the lesson of the Book of Mormon and follow the prophets. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.